Okay everyone, so now I just want to continue with our project here. I've already opened up my shell here or terminal for us to be able to work with our development server. I have one terminal open for our development server that comes with Laravel. And we also have one that I'll be using for committing some of the changes that we will be working on. And I also have Tinker here, which is for us to be able to check out things from the background especially if we will be working with our database let's say again here migrations and our database tier and currently we do have one user already in our project and as you can see here we have test user one and if I try to log in again just to have a quick review here from what we did last time because we installed our telescope feature or we installed telescope last time for us to be able to monitor some things that are happening in our application here and you would see let me just go here and there we go we are now logged in so the key thing now that i would want to work on is for us to be able to go and check where our page or let's say where can we find anything that's related to our html okay that's the first thing that we would want to figure out here when we are learning laravel i'm pretty new with laravel and i just want to really familiarize myself with the framework that's why i am working on learning different versions of laravel so for my experience when i learned laravel I usually have all of these terminals open. Uh, one will be for the development server, for the git changes, for, and I will also usually open up another one just in case that I might need to go and try to work on some other things using the terminal. Let's say I'm going to be installing, or I'm going to be running some PHP artisan commands here. Let's say PHP artisan again. This is just my workflow just to get to be much more easy for me it will be much easier for me to be able to move around all of these four terminals here so that i can go and work with tinker i can work with the actual terminal from where i'll be running php artisan commands and i will be also running here uh git specifically i'm going to use git here on this one and here will be the development server so again, I just want to talk about uh, here the things that are related to HTML. So when we talk about HTML, most of the things that you will, or the directory from where you will be looking for that will be inside of our resources and the views. And as we all know, model view controller, that's the basic concept that you will encounter if you're going to be, or you will be finding out there uh, in the sea of information on the web if you will be working with Laravel it's a model view controller concept that you might want to check out and you would see here we have the views directory and we have the home.blade.php and we also have here the welcome.blade.php file and we have that welcome.blade.php and we can see here the routes we can see some blade directives here and we can also see here let me just go back here one thing to take note of if you want to go and close the actual terminal you'll need to click here but if you try to just go and close the panel it will just uh, you'll just be closing this but you will not be turning off the whatever is running from the background so if you want to kill one terminal in your Visual Studio Code here, you'll need to click here on this delete button. That really confused me quite some time when I was working with my terminal Visual Studio Code. And when I was checking it out on my task manager, I was wondering what are those processes that are running. So just a 
note to remember if you're going to be working with multiple terminals you might want to make sure if you're done using one instance of your terminal you might want to go and close it by killing it and not by closing the panel here so one quick thing to take note of when we talk about the blade rendering template this will be allowing you to go and have some snippets of PHP in our views here as you can see we do have some PHP commands that we do have here and I believe this at here is a blade directive if we try to check it out so you would see if you go to Laravel docs I'm currently reading the uh, Laravel 9 documentation but I have tried out building this project using Laravel 8 and there's a bit few changes if you're going to be transitioning to Laravel 9 that's just something to take note of but the one that I used as a reference is the 5.8 version and then I transitioned to eight ver the Laravel 8 version and then now we're reading through the Laravel 9 here just to get a quick overview of what the blade template is it's a powerful templating engine that is included with laravel unlike some php templating engines blade does not restrict restrict you from using plain php code in your templates all blade templates are compiled into plain php code and cache until they are modified meaning blade adds essentially zero overhead to your application and blade template files use the .blade.php file extension and are typically stored in the resources views directory. Blade views may be returned from routes or controllers using the global view helper. Of course, as mentioned in the documentation on views, data may be passed to the blade view using the view helper second argument. And as we can see here, we do have the route class. We have a get method. We're passing in a parameter for the root directory we have a function expression or anonymous function then we have a return keyword with the view method that is just returning two more parameters with an array uh, that is pertaining to the name and a value a property and a value I, I believe this is a property and a value okay so that's just something to take note of if you're going to be working with blade it will be allowing us to throw in some templates in our HTML here. That's why we have that welcome.blade.php file. And just take note, when we talk about the views in our directories here, this is mostly composed of HTML markup. And as much as possible, every computing or when we say we try to work on fetching some data we used our controllers here for any logic that we will be working on in the future so that's just something to take note of most of the logic should be here in our auth directory for our application most probably it's good that you go and try to separate some of your markup uh, most of the front end will be separated from the logic of your application that will be found here in our controllers okay and for the database uh, usually we will be using the migrate or the models in this case so you, we can see we now have currently one user class that has this extends and this is just pertaining to another class uh, when we talk about inheritance in a sense um, usually classes usually implements the implementation of inheritance in this case we have this authenticatable class that we are accessing using this used keyword here